Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome, welcome to another celebration of Black History Month. My name is Sharon Herbert. I'm a registered nurse and motivational speaker and nursing coach at Power in Nursing Innovations. And I'm here today to share with you some information about nursing and diversity in healthcare. So our subject for today is how does nursing diversity matter? And I'm gonna take you on a short history ride. So log in and don't forget to lock your seatbelt as we go on this journey. I'm gonna share a little bit of history with you about the history of nursing. I bet you didn't know that nursing really started in about the 16, 1700s in England on the battlefields, men were charged with removing those injured persons from the field. That's how it all started. Someone had to do it. And later, women started doing it in about the 17, late 1700s or so. And we've all heard of Florence Nightingale, the mother of nursing, as she's been named. She actually was in London and she came to the United States to serve the battlefield sites of the Civil War. And that's how we know about the beginning of nursing in the United States. Well, she went on with that for a while and it became ooh, the rest of the 1800s where she continued with her schools of nursing. But there were no women of color or no persons of color in that school. She continued as she had been going. And it wasn't until about 1900 when my shero, Mary Eliza Mahoney, an African-American woman from the Boston area, decided to enter the School of Nursing in Boston. That was a struggle for her but she did finish by some twists of fate and she was the first African-American woman in the United States to have a certified degree as a professional nurse. Now that was history and it was so exciting. She got a chance to serve her community and folks that looked like her around the Boston area. And sooner or later, a few more nurses proceeded to graduate from the School of Nursing and they started caring for persons in their area. But it wasn't long that they did that and it took a long time to see very many patients. You know, they didn't have, you know, cars and they didn't have uh, Ubers, so it was a challenge and the, the decades went on and still there were few nurses of color serving in their communities. Well, as it goes, that took even more decades and up to about the 1960s, there were a few more African-American nurses. They started their own schools of nursing and were taking care of patients, but Lo and behold, that still wasn't enough to provide health services to the folks in the different, and I'll use air quotes, communities, non-white communities who were either of a different race, a different gender identity, a different economic strategy or income strategy, a different religion, so on and so forth. They were totally different from the Florence Nightingales. So as we went on, that still became a challenge. And as we are even now just still in the COVID land, there are still a group of different communities that aren't being well served by the system. And as we go along, those persons are as different as even was 100 years ago, identified as different and they are in places and spaces where they're not able to get the best care. 
They don't have hospitals or public health clinics in their area, and they may or may not have uh, Walgreens or CVS, but they don't even have good nutrition because they don't have adequate food sources for healthy foods. So if you don't have healthy foods and you don't have health resources and there aren't any folks in your area that are looking to serve you, what happens when you have chronic illnesses? What happens when you have diabetes, heart disease, COPD, a lung disease? Yes. And then comes COVID. We have a big now group of people that are not receiving services that are available today. And that qualifies as a group or a area of folks who are qualified as having been set to be in the category of health disparities. And you know, there's someone collecting data about that. And if you look at the numbers, you look at African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, we fall into that race bucket. And you may not be getting served, but this is the good news for you. Nurses are the greatest number of health care givers in the system. And they are coming from neighborhoods that look like yours. Their family members look like you. And we know how some of you are fearing speaking to the doctor when you go to the hospital. And we know some of the social cultural norms for your area. So when you come and we greet you, we are always talking to you. And I think sometimes you feel more comfortable sharing or asking questions than you do with the doctors. And that's the best news for you and for the nurses, that we feel that we are able to have better communication with you. And we know that every year nurses gain the best trust from the community. So we honor and value that. And we're there for you and you govern yourself accordingly. You talk to us like we are not strangers and you trust us and you give us feedback on what's going on in your home or with your, your toe and the fungus and the shoes that you don't have and the food that you don't have in your neighborhood, how your, your grandson got COVID from school, we honor that communication. And this is what I want you to do. Make a nurse your best friend. We know all of the systems in the health organization. We know how to find the social worker. We know how to find the resources. And if you have a primary care provider, we know how to find them too. We know how to help you with a plan of care for discharge. Now, if you are diabetic and you are supposed to be on a specific diet, and we know what that is, it's the 